Hello, everybody. I'd like to give an introduction to automorphisms. So an automorphism is a particular type of isomorphism. Let me remind you what an isomorphism is. So an isomorphism phi from a group G to a group H, it's a bijective function such that for all inputs A and B, if we combine A and B and G and then map them over to H using phi, we get the same thing as if we map A to H using phi, map B to H using phi, and then combine phi of A and phi of B in H. So we preserve the group structure. Combining things in G and then mapping them over to H gives you the same answer as taking two things in G, mapping them each individually over into H, and then combining them there in H. An automorphism is a particular type of isomorphism where you happen to map from the group G to itself. So instead of mapping from G to a potentially different group, H, an automorphism is when we map from G to G. So automorphism is a good name. Auto means self, and so we're, we have an isomorphism from a group to itself. There's an obvious isomorphism or automorphism from any group to itself. Just the identity map is one automorphism. But we'll study in a bit more detail what are, what are other automorphisms from one group to itself. Let me give you um, an example of an automorphism from the complex numbers to the complex numbers equipped with addition that's not just the identity automorphism, the obvious one. So one automorphism is you can map the complex number a plus bi, where i is the square root of negative 1, to its complex conjugate, a minus bi. And this is an automorphism. It preserves a group structure, even though it's not the identity map. OK, this video is just an introduction. So for the rest of uh, this lecture, we'll focus on what are the automorphisms of z mod 10. So this is the number 0 up through 9. Addition is our operation, mod 10. Um, what we'll be saying here will really hold for any cyclic group, z mod n, but I'm using z10 as a specific example. So let's say alpha is an automorphism from z10 to itself. One comment is that the entire map alpha is, is determined by alpha of 1. So if I tell you where alpha maps 1, then you know where alpha maps any other element. Um, this is because 1's a generator, as you'll see. So let's say I, I tell you where alpha of 1 maps. It maps to alpha of 1, OK? Well, where does alpha map k? So k is an arbitrary element of z10. Well, note that alpha of k is just alpha of 1 added to itself k times. And now, using the property that alpha is an automorphism, or in particular, uh, uh, well, or more generally, an, an, an isomorphism, we know that alpha of a bunch of things combined together is um, alpha of each individual thing, then all combined together. That's, that's the defining property of an isomorphism. So alpha of 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is just alpha of 1 plus alpha of 1 plus dot 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 plus alpha of 1. Since alpha is, a, is an automorphism or more generally an isomorphism, hence preserves the group structure. And anything added to itself, k times, is just alpha of 1 times k. So where does alpha of map, where does alpha map k? It maps it to k times alpha of 1. That's the sense in which where alpha maps 1 determines where alpha maps anything. You know, if alpha maps 1 to 7, then alpha maps k to 7 times k. Fantastic. All right. So in our previous lecture, we talked about properties of isomorphisms. And one property was that if two groups were isomorphic, 
and if, if both groups were cyclic, then um, a generator of the first group had to map to a generator of the second group. Here we're in the case where, where we're looking at automorphisms. So our first group and our second group are the same, Z mod 10. So we're mapping Z mod 10 to itself. And so here what this property says is a generator of Z10 under an automorphism alpha has to get mapped to another generator of Z10. That's what this third line says here. Since one is a generator of Z10, it has to be the case that where one gets mapped also has to be a generator of Z10. And we know the generators of Z10, they're the numbers relatively prime to 10. So they're 1, 3, 7, and 9. So this is telling us that under our automorphism, one has to get mapped to a generator of Z10. So one has to get mapped to 1, 3, 7, or 9, another generator. So there's only four automorphisms from Z10 to itself. Let's call them alpha 1, alpha 3, alpha 7, and alpha 9, depending on where the generator 1 gets mapped. So alpha 1 um, maps the generator 1 to 1, alpha 3 is going to map the generator 1 to 3, alpha 7 is going to map 1 to 7, and alpha 9 is going to map 1 to 9. More generally, where do each of these automorphisms alpha 1, 3, 7, and 9 map an arbitrary input k, well, that's, that's what we learned up above. Where alpha maps k is just k times where alpha maps 1. So since alpha 1 maps 1 to 1, alpha 1 maps k to 1 times k, and, and etc. So alpha 7 is going to be this automorphism that maps any input 7 sorry, any input k to 7 times k. And alpha 9 is going to be an automorphism that maps any input k to 9 times k. This is a complete list of all automorphisms of Z10. Any other automorphism you, you write down is going to be a map that's equal on the nose to one of these four right here. Let me draw a picture of this map alpha 3. So on the left, we have part of the multiplication table for Z10, or Cayley table for Z10. Um, if, you, if you drew colors for each different element and you filled out this entire Cayley table, we'd have these diagonal stripes because this is a, a cyclic group. And alpha 3 is going to map each element k to just 3 times k. So 0 maps to 0, 1 maps to 3, 2 maps to 6, 3 maps to 9, 4 maps to 4 times 3, which is 12, but mod 10, that's 2, etc. And you'll notice that on, um, on the right-hand side, we still have the same diagonal stripes. Okay. So you can see that these two groups are isomorphic because the patterns of their Cayley tables is preserved, but this is not the identity map, right? Every element is being multiplied by 3. If you wanted to check that alpha 3 satisfied the property of being an, an automorphism, you need to check this, this isomorphism property that it, that it preserves the group operation. So you would need to check that alpha 3 of two arbitrary inputs is indeed alpha 3 of the first combined with alpha 3 of the second input. And we, and we can check that here. So what is alpha 3 of two arbitrary elements of Z10 A and B, A plus B? Well, um, um, A and B when they're combined in Z10 is just A plus B mod 10. Alpha 3 of anything is three times that thing. So alpha 3 of a plus b is 3 times a plus b. But we can distribute. 3 times a plus b is 3 times a plus 3 times b. And then you'll notice that 3 times a is just alpha 3 of a, and 3 times b is alpha 3 of b. So indeed, this line here is confirming that alpha 3 is an automorphism, um, where on this line, a and b are arbitrary elements of z10.
Okay, so that was just an introduction to automorphisms, but we'll see more about them in the coming weeks. Thanks.